God because you reign. We thank you, God, for when you live, we move and have our being. We thank you, God, for our lives are hidden in you. We thank you, God, the hope of our lives, oh God. We thank you, Jesus. We bless your name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. You're welcome for the Second service. I'll ask the choir to take us away in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord, church. Amen. We serve a Lord with a beautiful name. We serve a God with a wonderful name. We serve a God with a powerful name. Yes. Nothing compares to Him. Nothing in this world can stand against Him. Nothing.
give you all the praise. Almighty oh, is your name. Oh,
Father, we thank you. We bless your name, O oh God. You're enthroned in glory forever. No one ever compares to you. We thank you. We lift our voices to honor and bless your name. For in Jesus' name we worship. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. I know you're in the past six. I know you're that. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Without wasting time, I want us to welcome Pastor Titus to come and lead us in the session of prayer. In Jesus name. Hallelujah. Somebody give Jesus a big hand clap for in the house. Can you get seated, please? the choir can as well. Let's thank God for them. They have done very well. I want to welcome you all from the voting session. We want to thank God the Lord, the Bible commands us to thank God in everything, isn't it? I know that uh, in life there are appoint appointments and disappointments. Uh, because uh, there are sometimes when I say, I want this one, then it turns out to be different. I want this one, it turns out to be different. But whatever happens, all in total summary, we give God the glory, the honor, and the praise because you went and you exercised your will. What matters is that you exercised your will and you did it and give him the honor and the praise and release one another. Now, when things like that have happened we, and we thank God for qualities that we are peacefully here able to pray, we give him the honor. In the Bible, 2 Chronicles chapter 7, I don't want to spend much time, uh, but just read out a scripture for us to post just to pray. We want to pray concerning two major things in that we are continuing with the battle with COVID-19, that's important. That's why we are looking like what we are looking. One time I went for, to, to pray with friends in Sherina Hotel where we were trying to have we had a big prayer meeting and I couldn't recognize many brethren because we all looked like baboons. <laughs> so who are you, who are you, until they did this, they, oh, hey, oh. But this is for temporary. One day the Lord will put us through this. It has happened in many ways. We give God the glory, the honor, and the praise. So we are continuing in prayer and fervent prayer, like Elijah prayed until rain came. We are praying until the Lord brings us through. He knows how to do it. And uh, that way the Bible says in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 13, it says, if I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain, or if I command the locusts to divide the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, and my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven, will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. That is an ongoing thing, brethren. No holiday for it. Thank God we have been praying and fasting over this period of time. We are continuing to pray and fast until we see a breakthrough. Praise the name of the living God. We also want to thank God because we've been praying and fasting and there are many answers God has brought to our, 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 our table. Part of it has been our own lives as individuals, our families, the church, the nation, all these exercises we've been having. We cannot fail to give him the honor and the praise for all that he has done this far. We can say Ebenezer, this far the Lord has brought us. Glory to his name. But also, as we go through these phases of life, and especially right now in Uganda, as a nation, we have just finished this voting, and yesterday they declared president-elect, we realize that uh, we continue to pray. They, there are times when an event takes place, but then after that, we need to follow up. And that's very, very important. The follow-up is very important because of the, uh, the after effects, whatever it is, appointments and disappointments. And we need to pray that there can be wisdom in the leadership, in all those authorities. 
And that we're under focus is second uh, uh, first first Timothy chapter first Timothy chapter two. Let us focus on that one because that will be our needing verse as we pray. This is what the Bible says here. Paul calling Timothy and the rest to prayer. First of all, he says, Then I urge that entreaties and prayers, petitions, and thanksgivings be made on behalf of all men. How many men? Every man pray for them. Somebody told me that he doesn't like a certain guy. I told him, the Bible says pray for all men. Even that one you don't like. Pray for all men. For kings, now here he becomes a bit specific. For kings and all who are in authority, pray for them. Amen? So that we may lead a tranquil and quiet life in all godliness and dignity. That's the guidance from the word of God. That's the formula of prayer. As we stand up in the presence of the Lord, we want to pray and entreat the Father that there will be peace and quiet in this land of Uganda. And we can decree it. Why? Because we are his people who are called by his name. And if we repent from all our sins, so that we don't fall victims of Isaiah 59, verse 2, where he says, I never answered, and my ear is not dull, neither is my hand shortened, but because of your sins. We pray that the Lord in repentance in the whole country, all of us, we shall come to the Lord with clean hands and say, Lord, forgive us and strengthen us that we may pray a prayer that can be accepted as an offering before you. Our God reigns. And I want to say this. Psalm 99 says, He is the God who reigns over the realm of the universe. He sits on his throne above. If he's there, and he's the one who has authority, nothing will be impossible for him in Uganda and all over. We thank God for that. We're not only the ones going through problems. I'm sure that the whole world has been taken on to pray. In, uh, in America, they are praying very seriously. I think some of you are with current affairs. Those of you who don't know what's going on and you think it's only Uganda, my friend, you have to be pitied like Paul would say. They are deploying about 20,000 troops to make sure they guard the, you know, Washington before the swearing in of the inauguration of, of Biden. That means that there's a lot of tension. But people who are called by God's name can quell all this. That we can be in peace and quiet. Let us stand up. Everybody raise up your voice to God. Just thank him and pray over these issues I have talked about. You know how to talk to him. Talk to him as an individual. The time comes when you may not be in a group, but you are alone. You can talk to God. Let us spend a minute, and then I will conclude. Orushima matoro wa hati ya hama makosa ba matoro ya hiba ba konda. Ndaba ba kusuru mahasi ya ba ba kosi ya mama ndoro ba hafsu ba ba kusuri ya hata. Uzuma ndoro ba kati ba kuto mahasi ya kiti hama makosa ba kote ya hata. Papa kuto mahasi ya mama ndaro ba ta. Masul mama ndoro ba yaza ba makosa ba ba kuto ya yaza ba kuto ya hili ba kondo. Zama ndoro ba yahisa kwa maso. Zama ba kuto ba maso ba maso. Mama ndoro mahasi ba kanza maso. Mama ndoro ba yashe ba ndoro maso. Zama kuto ba makoso ba. Uji mama ndoro ba zama. Papa kusuru mama kuto ba yahiba ba hasa. Mama kuto ba yahiba ba hasa. Mama kanza. Lazima mama kuto ba yahiba ba kuso ba mama. Ba suru mama ndoro ba zama. Heavenly Father, we stand in your presence to acknowledge your sovereignty over the realm of the universe. That Lord, all in all, from Genesis chapter 1 to Revelation, Lord of God, the last chapter, you are God who has reigned over the whole world. There is nothing. You are the Alpha and the Omega. And that is one Father whom we address, who is able and capable of quailing everything that may come our, our way. We thank you. And Father, we ask you to forgive us where we have sinned before you. Cleanse us that our lives may be acceptable to you. And Father, in that acceptance, we come to you. In accordance with your request, Lord of God, from the word of God. In Philippians 4, 6, you say, let us not be anxious about anything, but in the prayer and supplication with petitions and thanksgiving, let our prayers be known to you. Our, our needs. And our need, Lord, right now here, as we raise up Uganda before you, Raise the president before you. Raise all the political aspirants before you. Raise all those who have been not campaigning before you. Raise all the electorate before you. Raise every individual, Lord of the soil of Uganda before you. 
We are saying all men, and all men, we bring them to you, Lord. With all their colors and all their aspirations and all their emotions and all their attitudes, whatever it is, Lord of glory, we are saying, Lord, one thing that you require of us, that there may be peace and tranquil and silence, that the gospel may be preached without compromise. So we pray, Heavenly Father, you will reign over Uganda. Rain from every corner, from the east, the west, from the north, the south, in the central, everywhere above and below. Father, we pray over the waters, over the mountains. Lord, take control of this nation. We do ask you, Lord of glory, that you will do it. Because you are a God who answers. And who can do exceedingly abundantly above what we ask, or even what we think. According to your power, that's working right now in us. By Christ Jesus, that all generations will give glory and honor to you. We thank you, we bless you, we receive an answer, we receive over the healing, Lord, over the things you have fought over locusts, over the things of the COVID-19. We pray, Heavenly Father, you continue to reveal until, Father, we have got a solution to this problem. You are able to do it in Uganda here, as you can do it elsewhere. We thank you and we honor you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And when you are still standing, I just want to first of all thank God for us and for you. Uh, we also want to bring you greetings from our pastor, our pastor, Pastor Richard Wangwe. He's not here with us today because he had to to go. He lost his relative close, and he had to go and do the burial today. So we pray that the Lord will, will bring him, tra- make him travel safely and back. But he sends you his love and greetings. <laughs> So today it's a real great privilege. You know, many of you have heard us with my pretend that he has shared, he has shared very heavily and very passionately concerning this year, based on interlinking both 54, Isaiah 54, verse 2, and uh, Isaiah 60, arising and shining in enlarging and lengthening and strengthening. And there are many areas in that, some of them which he has highlighted to us in terms of evangelism in terms of discipleship, in terms of leadership development, and in terms of giving. Those are major areas that we are going to concentrate on this year as we travel through it. And it's my privilege this today to invite one of us who is kick-starting that area of discipleship, which we know is a very, very important thing. Jesus spent most of his time on that. For all the three years, he was doing discipleship. And he started with 12. He did not, he did not start with too many. He started with 12. Went through, including Judas Iscariot. Three years the guy was there, given opportunity. And I want to say, God is going to take us through slowly but surely. Please be attentive as we receive His servant, our own Dr. Monica Musenero, my sons of no house. <laughs> Praise the living God. Amen. It feels good to be here. Welcome, Mr. Masanza. It's, it's just obvious. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It's good to be gathered together in the name of the Lord. It has been a while since I was here. I've been attending church, but online. But uh, bo- be sometimes in a car driving. Many times I just watch the service. Uh, but I want to thank God so much. Uh, I notice that I have more younger people in this service yeah. than in the previous one. Yeah. <laughs> there are many young younglings here, and uh, that's... Uh, the Bible says that uh, blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 <laughs> so the reason they are here in this service is because they don't like waking up early. Okay. Um, I'm called uh, Monica. 
Senero Masanza, although how I'm referred to depends on where I am. So most cases in public will be a Dr. Monica Msenero. Uh, doctors have a challenge when they marry, changing their names after they have got the doctor name. So Dr. Masanza is that one. Dr. Msenero is this one. So I will have to go through the whole process to change my name officially to be that, and then we'll continue as love to be session. But it's good to be here. Uh, thank you so much for the opportunity to share with the church and uh, at the beginning of the year. Um, I would like to just pray. Just pray. And uh, as we pray, I want us to be fully aware. Just close your eyes, be calm, be fully aware that God is here. He's a faithful God. What he says he does, he has promised us that when we are gathered, two or three of us, he's there in our midst. And he's here. Father, we thank you for your presence with us. Holy Spirit, we thank you that you're here to communicate the truth to our hearts. We welcome you. We pray that you'll help us to be tuned into you. Help our ears to listen beyond the words, not just to hear, but to listen. Help us, Lord, to be transformed by the renewing of our minds as we listen to the word. I pray that your presence shall be felt so strongly, Lord, by your children as they gather this morning. Father, I pray that you take every single word and convert it into a double-edged sword as your word is described that shall bear its fruit, shall not come to you back to your void, but shall bear fruit in the lives of those who are listening. Thank you, Father, for the plan that you have for us as a church, the plan you have for us as a congregation, the plans you have for us, each one of us as an individual. You have wonderful plans for each one of us to prosper us. I pray, Lord, that we shall be receptive of it. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, thank you for bearing with us. I know that uh, some, almost everybody's lives have been disrupted by COVID. And uh, being at the lead and being a member of the church, not just this congregation, but the church, <laughs> in the country and worldwide. Uh, on behalf of uh, the Royal I apologize to you, although I'm not saying if it's necessary, we will not lock again. If it's necessary, just take it that's love. <laughs> so if it is out of love, it's to protect you, it's to defend you. It's when we have prayed and really we have felt the leading that this is necessary, that's when that happens. Uh, so I know sometimes it is uncomfortable and it is distressing. But we thank God that this far he has brought us. Uh, there are many countries that have done so, so badly, so, so badly. Uh, but we thank God so much. Uh, this morning I'm going to share and beginning to share on a, a series of uh, teachings. This is really introductory. Uh, how do we actually achieve? I was saying in the first service that the leaders in Deliverance Church have this scripture. Because a few times, there has been a few times that this scripture has come back as a theme. Because I've been, I've been in church for 30, from 1993, many years are those. <laughs> Don't worry if you are not yet born. <laughs> so I, the, the theme for this year comes from Isaiah 54. Uh, there are many verses, but I'll take the key verse. Enlarge the place of your tent. Enlarge the place of your tent. This is in the NIV version. Enlarge the place where you're going to put your tent, because why? Because you are going to enlarge the size of the tent that you put there 
And because the tent is going to be large, you need to strengthen the cords. Cords which hold a small tent cannot hold a bigger tent. Now, this is an action scripture. It's an action scripture. And uh, it will be a pity if we come to December 2021 and we cannot see the evidence of this as an individual, as families, as members of the community, as a church. Because when God gives us a word like this, he's going to call for accountability at the end. So I would like to begin in Genesis. Why are we here? What are we doing here? Why are we here? Why are we on earth? And this started with a dialogue at creation. You know, God is one, but is one in three. Or is a plural God. He manifests in different forms. And after creating everything, Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, God says, now, this is a special thing. <laughs> we need to talk about it. The other one was just saying, let there be, let there be, let there be. But this one was going to be packaged with the three in one. So he says, let us make man. Let us make man. And this person, this particular creature is going to be special. It's going to be in our likeness in our likeness, or in our image. Why? Because he's going to rule. Let him have dominion. Let him rule over the rest of creation. In Genesis chapter 1, we are told, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and we do not hear about anything about heaven after that. God packaged and created the earth to fit man because he created us in his own image. Why he did it, I don't know. But for sure, I'm so privileged and I'm so happy he did it. Scientists for all the years are trying to find life on other planets. But I tell you, when they are going to the moon, they have to pack their air. They have to take air to breathe. The oxygen, they breathe. They have to take it. Should it run out, they'll die. They have to pack all the water. There is no other planet which is like Earth. God created it and then he gives it to us. He says, let him rule over everything. So God had a purpose for creating you and me. Now, when he created the first person, he also put a mechanism for each one of us to, be, to come to be. And so God does not make things without purpose. He created man, and when he created him, in first in his plan, in Genesis 2, we read the details of how that unfolds, how that comes, how did he create. And I want us to focus on uh, verse 5 of Genesis chapter 2. We learn something there about what happened, how he actually brought it to be. God, in chapter 1 of Genesis, created things in the spirit. They were not there. He said, let there be, let there be, let there be, let there be. In Genesis 2, they tell us the details now, how these things begin to unfold, to come. So in Genesis 2, we learn... Uh, he will tell, you will see uh, this is the account of how the heavens and the earth, when they were created, tells us 
So everything is created twice. It is created in the spirit and create, then brought to be physical. Everything is created twice. Even us, as we go on in this, we shall learn. Everything you do is created twice. You think about it, and then you do it. Isn't it? Now, if you just think about things, you never, do you ever get them? I, one day on social media, I read somebody was uh, praying how to transfer the money from his mind to his pocket. <laughs> now, on, in verse 5, there is a fundamental statement there. Now, no shrub had yet appeared on the earth, and no plant had yet sprung up. How come when they had already been created in chapter 1? Okay. For the Lord God had not sent rain on the earth. And there was no one. As scripture says, there was no man to till the land. God created the world with principles, with rules, with how things come to be. And here we see a way, a, a, a principle that God sets that he can bring something to be in the spirit. And the rain represents the spirit. But it had not yet come on earth. The reason it had not yet come, and therefore it could not come up because there was no man to till it. There was no man, there was no one to do the work. God has limited himself on what he does on earth. He will not do anything without man. He will not bring anything to pass on earth. I think it was uh, uh, Dr. Teresa who was preaching here some time ago and saying spirits don't function on the earth without man. And God is a spirit. So God said it that for anything to happen on earth, even when he has already declared it in the spirit, there needs to be a man to till the land. There needs to be a human being. And for that purpose, because he, 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 God is a law keeper. He keeps his own law. He does not disobey his own law. And since he put that, it's you and me who bring God's will to pass on earth. Hello? Without us, God's will, good and perfect will, will be there. But it will not pass. Uganda will be rich in the spirit, poor in the physical. You will be rich in the spirit, but poor in the physical. Why? Because if there is no man to till, he couldn't even send rain. He didn't send rain. He actually, God himself teaches us. He does what we call prototypes. He develops a model and says, now I want you to be fruitful. I want you to replicate this. I want you to make many, many copies of this. So he goes to one corner of the earth called Eden. He brings rivers to pass there. He plants a garden. He planted a garden. At that point, Eden was the only place we plant. There was nothing. That is why when he, he was sending out Adam, it was like, you are really going to toil. <laughs> because the rest of the earth was not ready. Because there had been no man to do what? To till it. There was no man to cause things to be because God has handed that authority to you and me. 
So he plants it, and when he plants, the, the story goes that after that, he had made man, he plants the garden, he brings the man to the garden to tend it. Not to simply enjoy, no. To do what? To look after it. Saying, Adam, I want you to learn from here what I want the earth to be, the things that I have created in the spirit, I want you to bring them in the physical and make them look like Eden. Hallelujah. And then, I want you to be fruitful. I want you now to extend Eden. You remember, in Genesis 1.26, he blessed them and said, do what? Be fruitful. Huh? Multiply. And do what? There are four steps there. Let's read it. Uh, verse 20, uh, sorry, Verse 28, not 26, says, God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful. Number one, do what? Be fruitful. Number two, increase. Increase. Number three, fill the earth. Number four, have dominion. I call that the four-way test, and we'll have a training on that. If you are a child of God and you are in some place and you are standing on your little Eden, you must reproduce it. You must multiply it. You must increase it. And you must finally have dominion. You must have dominion. You can't reach a place and it remains the same. You can't. You know, I, 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 I work a lot in state house and what? I don't preach. I don't preach there. The people just look at me and they're like, but you know, it's in Zemiro. You see for her. <laughs> they, they have to change color. People have to change and because there are things people will not do around me. But then there are things they will say, you know, if you want that one, go to her. She's very hardworking. She's straightforward. She's truthful. She's going to do this. She's going to make it work. So you begin to be fruitful. To be fruitful is to produce one after your kind. Adam, there is Eden. Now I want you to replicate this here and here. To be fruitful, uh, a non-fruitful tree is a tree that grows and fails to produce fruit. Jesus found one, a fig tree. He saw one and he was like, this tree is so grown. He has been here for years. But it was just enjoying the environment. Green leaves, very nice, grown. If you know fig trees, fig trees should be having some fruit. You know, the, the, the commonest fig tree we know here is the motuva, the one we make back cloth from. They have so many fruit, and there are, those, there are many, many types of them. And the one he had was not that type. But he, when he found, he was so disappointed. He had grown, but it was not fruitful. So growth is not fruitfulness. The two are different. When I plant beans, they germinate, they grow, but they must reach a place when they flower. And when they put in the pods, then they become, they begin to produce fruit, and that fruit is where the seed that will produce and it will multiply. So God planted that principle in everything that he created. Just a few years ago, a few decades ago, Uganda had only 10 million people. Now we are 40 close to 45. So God put that principle. Now spiritually, it has big implications for us. Of course, Adam is here. He's enjoying. He's like, wow, wow, wow. He's happy. He's just enjoying what God has created and he's, he's having fun naming animals. 
then disruption came. In that enjoyment, in that relaxation, Adam obeyed a different instruction. The one you obey, you become a servant. Obedience breeds servanthood. If you obey God, you become God's servant. Obedience is a language of love. When you obey, it's a language of love. So when you obey the devil, it's a covenant statement. So in that act, man fell and lost the ability to relate with God and lost the ability to be fruitful and replicate Eden. And so we see man sent out of Eden into a land where he was told it shall grow thistles and he will toil. He will eat from the sweat. He will, you know, he leaves Eden there. And God puts swords, angels with his cherubim to guard it because man could eat on the fruit of the tree of life and live forever in the fallen state. Fast forward, God still cannot accomplish the purpose for which he created earth. He finds, he puts in place a mechanism to bring back man to him so that they can go back to the process of replicating Eden on earth because it's an extension of the kingdom of God. Jesus comes. He brings redemption. Redemption is a mystery. And these days when I talk about the word redemption, I just feel that wave of awe and love for God just sweep through my body because since last year I started to study this subject of redemption deeply to understand what it means. But Jesus does everything. One, he procures salvation. We can now relate with God. The separation which had come is dealt with. And we go, now we have the ability, it's not automatic anymore, but we have the ability to go back to God, stand in Eden, but now we are many. The moment you're saved, you're, you are in your own Eden. And you're supposed to be fruitful. The challenge is many of us don't know who we are. We don't know what our Eden is. We don't know the purpose for which we are here. We don't know the reason. We simply live. We were born, you know, we were brought to church in Sunday school or somebody preached to you and somehow you came and you come to church every Sunday. Maybe I can join the choir and sing. Some of us have been coming to church for 35 years. But God has a specific use for you on earth. That's why you are here. Because he has a specific, otherwise, you would get saved, you shoo, go, fly away. Everybody will get saved, whoo, because you have already qualified for heaven, isn't it? In heaven, there is no praising, there is no planning, there is no work. God wants to use you here. God has plan a plan to use you here until your use is finished on earth and you are empty. And says, welcome, good and faithful servant. The majority of us leave Christianity as if God called us and we have found this comfort in God. We had so many problems. Now, neighbors, I'm come, hallelujah. 
I praise you, God. You will not allow the pestilence near me. You will not, you will provide my needs. God, you will keep me secure. Let me tell you, Mr. Masanza has his car. He loves that car. It doesn't. <laughs> I know. Uh, there's an example of that. He loves his land cruiser. And when he turns it on, you see him feeling the sound. He, he likes it. And uh, he takes care of it. If he has nothing to do, he'll have a cloth and he will be. But he does that because he has a purpose for that car. That any time he goes and ignites it, he wants to go somewhere, that car will start. The morning he woke up and the battery was down and he tried to turn it on and couldn't do what it was supposed to do. He was so frustrated. Brought in a mechanic. Does this, 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 this. That's, you, everything we own is for a purpose. Yeah. Everything you have is for a purpose. I've been fighting with the public. You know, they own a mask, but they put it on like this. That one doesn't. <laughs> the mask is for a purpose, isn't it? Yeah. Everything we, we own, and that's a principle which is coming from God. Each one of us is special. Made for a particular purpose. And the saddest thing is the majority of us walk through life without ever knowing why we were here. We compare ourselves with everybody else. We try to follow everybody else. We are dissatisfied because we are not them. We are unhappy with ourselves. We are so insecure. You know, you, we get stuck. Some people get stuck in jobs they don't like because they don't know anything else. God cannot spend so much time to design you. You are so fearful and wonderfully made. You don't know. I do. I understand the molecular level at which you are made. One molecule like this going wrong, you'll be dead. But he balances them each day because he has a purpose for you. He has a purpose for you. Jesus prayed a prayer in Matthew 6, 10. And said, let your will be done. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done in heaven as it is on earth. I mean on earth as it is in heaven. Let your will be done here. And he tells us in the same chapter, verse 33, our responsibility is to seek first the kingdom. Do you know your role in the kingdom? What's your role in the kingdom? If you think that you were saved to be happy, to be safe, to be protected, then Jesus could as well take you because that's what's in heaven. You'll never be in danger of anything. But as long as you're here, you have an Eden to produce copies of. You have to be fruitful. You have to multiply. You have to fill the earth with what you have and you have to dominate. As I work in those high levels and I've shared this with Papa, my heart breaks. Every day I'm like, where are the children of God who have been prepared to do these works? Where are they? I come here and I see the potential. I see the potential. People who have integrity. People who can seek the template from heaven and bring it on earth. Because they have a relationship with heaven. Who are those who are ready to become men who will till the land? To become women who will till the land? Brethren, we are not saved to come to church. The church is our culture media. 
we come here to be subjected to the fivefold ministry. Not the other one, Papa. Not the one of the men. Eh? But there is the fivefold ministry of being pastored, of being taught, of prophecy, of evangelism, and of apostleship. So that we are prepared for the what? We are equipped for? We are equipped for? Yes. So that we are equipped for the good works. We are equipped for service. And I'm so happy that I have so many young people in this particular audience. Some of us have discovered these things when our candles have been burnt so long. We just have the small stamp. You know those Mizubawa, eh? When you just have the small one left. But for you, you are still tall. Yeah. Even with that pointed part still up, the wick is still visible. If you light now, we can culture, we can cultivate, we can create the kingdom of God. We can bring it to pass. We can have it fill our land as the waters cover the sea. Praise the Lord. I've lost track of time. Service leader, please guide me. How many more minutes do I have? Okay. So um, I'm terribly passionate about this. I can lose track of time. So when Jesus saved us, Revelations, can you put Revelations chapter 5? Revelations 5, verse 8 to 10. When Jesus died, he saved us and took us back. And there it is told what we are supposed to do. What are we supposed to do? What are we supposed to be? What are we supposed to be? He purchased us back. Purchased us back at a big price. Brought us back at Eden so that we can talk with the Father, understand His plan, and cultivate it on earth. That's the summary. So He say He purchased, is it there? And when, let's read, let's read 10. For the sake of time, let's read 9, 9 and 10. Okay, so, and they sang a new song. You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals because you were slain. And with your blood, you purchased men for God. He has purchased us. He paid the ultimate price. From every... He purchased men for God from every tribe, including the Gwere, uh, and language, and people, and nation. So that they do what? Verse 10. You have made, let's read this together. You have made them to be a what? A kingdom. And priests to serve our God. And they will do what? Reign. And they will do what? Reign. Now, the majority of us have understood the reigning through prayer. We have not understood the reigning through action. Remember, the rain had not come. But also the f things had not germinated because there was no man to do what? So the reason there is such a big gap between what God has promised us and what we live with daily is because there are no men and women to cultivate it. And you are the ones who should take the lead in this. Are we ready? Are we ready? Or am I destroying your comfort zone of... Uh, I'm destroying your comfort zone, uh, you know. 
pastor goes, seeks the Lord, we come here, the choir practices, we come, hallelujah, wangabina pak rosuang. And then we go back home. No. God has a plan for you. The, God, the language of love, God understands, is O-B-I-D-I-E-N-C-E, obedience. That's God's language of love. Study the Bible if you want to prove me right. The language of love, if you want to tell God I love you, I think the marriage, you've learned about languages of love. Eh? Eh, if your spouse understands something different and you continue doing something different, they will tell you you don't love me. And yet for you, you love. The language of love, God understands is obedience. And I would like to challenge you. And through this time, through this strengthening, through this enlarging, we're going to have instruction so that we can have opportunity to grow up when we are children, we cannot bear fruit. A seedling of a bean does not flower so that we can grow up, so that we can bear fruit, so that we can multiply, so that we can be in position to have dominion. And my prayer is that, because I have seen Christians so confused, especially the young ones during these campaigns, they don't know which way to go. You know, these ones are looking this way, this way. We are the third dimension. We neither for them nor for them. But as commanders, as soldiers in God's army, we come. They feel that I could take on the side on, the, on social media and say, but my brother, we neither belong to them nor to them. We are God's army. Praise the Lord, let's stand up. Father, we thank you, we bless your name, we worship you. You are our God. You have created us for a special purpose, each one of us. You have given us the size, the height, the color, the gender. You have made us Ugandans and Africans. You have given us tribes just fitting for the purpose for which you allowed us to come on earth. I thank you, Lord, for these that have been under the sound of this word. Father, I pray that you'll multiply your word, that you'll cause it to bear fruit, you'll cause it to multiply, you'll cause it to have dominion in the lives of those who have listened. Father, I pray that as we walk out of here, we shall be we shall continue hearing. The Holy Spirit will amplify this word, will explain it, will make it clarified, and above all, he will bring conviction in the name of Jesus. Amen. Wow. Do you know why uh, there was nothing going to ask? Why nothing grew? Ben Hini said, You tell me. And Mary Simon said, Because there was no manager. Yeah. Because there was no manager. Why bring things to grow when there's no management? And so, without management, God cannot get things to sprout here. There cannot be, never be profitability. And thank God we're being formed into this. <laughs> Thank you very much. And God bless you. I don't know how to start preaching again. I really want to appreciate God for that word. <laughs> Hongola. You come and Hongola here. Praise the Lord.
Church. This is Sarah Datema, your host this morning at the Reverend Siachira News Desk. With me are my co-hosts from Studio A and Studio B. And here in Studio B with your host, Shalom. A good morning to you all. In Studio A, Alinda David, how are you doing? Pastor Richard Wangwe unveiled a new strategy of evangelism this year 2021. Our church building project has resumed. There will be a mentoring and leadership training at the Reverend Church Chira, laboring our tithe and offertory envelopes. This is the news in detail. Shalom in Studio B. Thank you, Sarah. For starters, Pastor Wango Richard has unveiled a new way of evangelism, which is tag along with a friend with you every Sunday consistently with a new friend and we are all encouraged to bring along a new friend with us every Sunday and due to this evangelism the numbers of the church have greatly expanded therefore the church is resuming its church building project with a budget of 350 million Ugandan shillings so we are all encouraged to participate in this project in any way we can back to you thank you Shalom let's hear from David in studio A thank you Sarah in our annual vision, we are having teachings on leadership and mentorship by Dr. Monica starting this Sunday. This is mainly to equip the leaders that are to come the skills that they require in church and in the market area. And this is going to go through as the, as the year goes by. And as a reminder, the church has reminded you to write your names and your prayer requests on your envelopes of the tithe and offerings so as to give it the pastors and the elders a wider range on what our fellow brethren want to be prayed for as the church. Back to you. Thank you, David. Thank you for listening to the news. Stay blessed and stay safe. Bye.